Welcome to the Cold War Simulation Student Orientation video. This video is for education purposes. The animations are not part of the Cold War Simulation. Students learn through interacting with each other and the teacher. This is not a video game. Welcome to the Cold War Simulation Student Orientation video. I'm Mr. Harms and I teach World History. You will be leaders of NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and Warsaw Pact countries led by the Soviet Union and will have to make decisions as to whether or not the world will survive a nuclear war or the world will not survive and we will achieve Armageddon. Albert Einstein was a famous physicist. He said, I know not with what weapons World War III will be fought, but World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. I think you'll understand what he meant when you finish this simulation. Good luck. Conventional or non-nuclear forces are the types of weapons used on the battlefield like tanks and planes. In the Cold War simulation, tanks represent armored divisions on the map. The example on the right shows NATO forces have five tanks or armored divisions, and the Warsaw Pact has 16 tanks or armored divisions. Taking the ratings of each times the number of divisions gives us a total of 45 for NATO and 128 for the Warsaw Pact, and the Warsaw Pact wins. An ICBM, or Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, is a rocket that travels from one continent to another in about 30 minutes. Each missile can carry multiple warheads or nuclear bombs that allow them to shower a target with multiple nuclear bombs. It is almost impossible to stop them. Ballistic missile bases are represented by these rockets. The white rockets are NATO and the green rockets are Warsaw Pact. Each rocket represents multiple missile silos underground or on mobile launch pads where they are stored. Nuclear submarines use nuclear power and can stay submerged for months at a time. These submarines carry SLBMs, or sea-launched ballistic missiles. The advantage to these missiles is that they are almost impossible to find, and they can get very close to the target, which gives little or no warning time. Long-range bombers like the B-52 and the Backfire Bomber are so fast they are very difficult to shoot down. Bombers carry a large nuclear payload. No matter how many you shoot down, it is certain that some of them will get through to their targets. The Dew Line is a string of radar stations in northern Canada that will detect ballistic missiles coming over the North Pole that are headed to North America. This is NATO's early warning system. In the Cold War simulation, the Def DEFCON, or Defense Condition Readiness, describes the alert level for both NATO and the Warsaw Pact. DEFCON 5 is the lowest level of readiness and is considered normal. DEFCON 4 is when security and intelligence work is increased and all forces are now on alert. DEFCON 3, nuclear submarines put to sea. DEFCON 2, all bombers are launched and in the air. DEFCON 1, all missile silos are hot and ready for launch. DEFCON 1 is the highest alert status before nuclear weapons are deployed. In a nuclear detonation, most will be air bursts. An air burst is when a nuclear bomb explodes high above the city, creating a lot more damage than if it blew up when it hit the ground. In this example, the red dot and yellow star represent an area with less than 1% survival, and all buildings would be decimated. 
The red circle outside the yellow star would see less than 25% survival rate with almost all structures decimated. The pink ring would have less than 25% survival rate and a less than 1% survival rate at two to four weeks out. The pink shade would see water and soil contaminated. Most survivors would die within four to eight weeks of detonation. As the Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev said, the survivors would envy the dead. When a country is turned red, it means it has been contaminated with lethal radiation and cannot be moved through. This can happen with all types of nuclear weapons, including tactical. Tactical nuclear weapons are used primarily on the battlefield for smaller targets like destroying whole armored divisions. Tactical nuclear weapons can be fired from artillery, small planes, and tanks. An all-out nuclear strike is designed to decimate the other side's ability to launch a counter-strike, mobilize their forces, or recover at all. Recovery from this scenario would take hundreds of years and in some places might not be inhabitable for thousands of years. The procedure for launching a nuclear strike will follow this sequence. The student. We want to initiate snap count. The teacher. Begin the code sequence on my mark. Mark. Student, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Victor. Teacher, I have code sequence confirmation. Target information. Student, strike package Bravo, followed by any targets that they may assign at the time. Strike package Bravo is a limited surgical nuclear strike destroying specific targets like armored divisions or naval ports. Let the four horsemen ride is an all-out nuclear strike. Launch on warning is an automatic response system that will fire all your missiles in the event the other side launches their missiles. You have to authorize this system by informing the head table. Once this system is activated, there is no way to stop it in the case of a launch. The student overview gives you a general explanation of the Cold War simulation. It describes some of the psychology of the Cold War and its major players. It also gives you some background leading into the Cold War. The World Situation Summary describes the history leading up to 1962. The early post-war period along with efforts by both sides to be the most dominant superpower. The formation of the two major alliance systems, NATO and the Warsaw Pact. The Marshall Plan is also discussed along with the effects it had on the recovery of Western Europe. The Cold War Operations Manual gives in detail all of the facets of the Cold War simulation. You should read it and keep it close by for reference during the simulation. Your top secret document will describe your military situation, your alliances, a summary of your country and its situation along with your objectives for the simulation. You must follow your objectives to get a good grade for the simulation. The war maps show the location of each country and where the mil military assets are located. The maps will display on the projector just like in a real war room. The leader list displays where each student is assigned for the simulation. The time frame for this simulation is approximately three days. The first day the instructor will explain all the facets of the Cold War simulation. On day two, the students will take over and we'll see if peace can be reached or Armageddon ensues. 
The order of turns will start with the Warsaw Pact, followed by NATO and the independents. The Warsaw Pact will first decide if they want to declare war. After they have done their battles, they will have the opportunity to move any forces they did not use during the war phase. The same scenario will happen again for the NATO countries and the independents. You do not have to wait until your turn to launch nuclear weapons. Depending on time and class period length, we will try and get in as many turns as possible. I would recommend working on the Cold War simulation report every day while everything is fresh in your mind. The report will be due at the end of the simulation. You will be required to journal after the orientation class period and during the days of the simulation. The topics for the journal should include your thoughts about what is going on, your plans or strategy about what you think you are going to do, and some significant events. What you don't want to do is a, is a technical summary or play-by-play -play of what did happen. Including significant events that happened during the period is good, but don't get bogged down in describing every little move that happened. We are most interested in what you are thinking. Here is an example journal entry. Today the Warsaw Pact, led by the Soviet Union, made aggressive moves on the borders of Austria and West Germany. They say they are just doing near yearly maneuvers, but it looks to me like they are massing for an invasion. The NATO alliance met today, and the countries that were close to the maneuvers are definitely more concerned than the ones that seem to be far away. Our alliance must stick together if we are to have any chance of defending against a Soviet-led invasion of Western Europe. I need to meet with the far Western democracies and explain that it would only be a matter of time if the Eastern country should fall. We'll see how they react to that. As always, make sure you have a plan and be ready to change it. This is a much shorter and more intense simulation than the World War I or World War II simulations. The key to the other side is always self-interest. The emotions in this simula simulation run extremely high. Keep that in mind. Good luck to you.